This is the new Nokia 7 Plus. The prevailing dry weather conditions in the country has reduced the national hydroelectricity production to 15%. To address the deficit in power generation, the Norochole coal power plant and other thermal power plants are continuously being used, with them contributing up to 80% of the national grid. In the event where electricity demand is higher than the supply, the Ceylon Electricity Board also resorts to purchasing power from private power producers. In a background note produced by the Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka, it states that the cost of emergency power purchased by these private producers in 2016 amounts to over 16 billion rupees, with the cost rising to over 26 billion rupees in 2017. As a solution to the current power crisis and increasing costs associated, the Ceylon Electricity Board proposed the least cost long-term power generation expansion plan for the period of 2018 to 2037. It consists of a mix of renewable and natural gas solutions to the energy crisis. Despite an official from the Ministry of Power and Renewable Energy who insisted to remain anonymous, claiming to First at Nine that the proposed plan has not yet been approved by the Public Utilities Commission, the Director General of the Commission insisted that such is not the case and the plan was in fact approved last year. The Public Utilities Commission even backed up their claim with a document. Public Utilities Commission has approved the lease cost generation expansion plan for 2018 to 2037 in July uh, 2017. So that plan has about 4,600 megawatts of uh, natural gas plants, 7,000 megawatts of renewable power plants. If you look at the next three years from 2018, 19 and 20, there are 320 megawatts of heavy fuel plants. 300 megawatts of uh, natural gas plants, 360 megawatts of uh, solar power plants and 270 megawatts of wind, wind power plants. Apart from that, we have many hydros, biomass power plants. The Director General of the PUCSL also warned that the delay in the implementation of the power generation expansion plan could incur losses in billions to the country. The implementation part is with Ceylon Electricity Board. I think the tendering process has taken a lot of time. About six months back, Commission has come out with a report on the losses due to the delay in implementation and the delay of implementation of these generation plants in the long-term generation ex expansion plan over the last 18 months is about 50 billion uh, rupees. Every month you delay the implementation, it costs us about more than 3 billion rupees. Meanwhile, Minister of Power and Renewable Energy Ranjit Siyabalapitiya yesterday elaborated on his plan to get the cabinet approval for a mixed power generation plan to tackle the power crisis. There's a drought for three years now. It's a challenge to supply electricity at the usual tariffs. But we haven't increased electricity levies or resort to power cuts. We've presented a mixed power generation plan now. It consists of solutions such as fossil fuel, renewable energy, water, wind power, solar power and so on. I got the economic committee to agree with me today about presenting this at the next cabinet meeting for approval and for its immediate implementation.